Hi and welcome to That's So Nova. If it's your first time coming to my channel, welcome. I'm Nova. And if you're a returning subscriber, hi, how are you doing? Today we're going to be doing the fourth part of the Ororosa traveling bag. This part is a little bit less intensive than yesterday. Out of all the four four videos that we do, I feel like yesterday was more labor intensive. And realistically, after you get done with it, you'd be like, oh, it all makes sense. Trust Ororosa's process. Alexis is brilliant. She knows what she's doing. Um, so today we're going to be constructing the lining. There's two packs. One is going to be slip pockets for you to put passports and the other one without me knocking over cameras. <laughs> the other one is a nice zipper pocket with an additional slip pocket. And I'm excited for that. Once we get that together, we're going to be doing a little trimming and basting the Wrong, the wrong sides together touching with the lining in the exterior and then we're going to put it to the bag and I'm going to be using staples today um, and then we're going to bind it and we're done it's not this is like the fun part because all the work that you put in from making the lining to making the flap to making the shoe gusset it's all going to be put together and you're going to see your gorgeous traveling bag so let's get started all right, if you're if you're with me, then you know we're getting pack seven. Pack seven is the main lining slip pocket. I just had pack seven, so <laughs> so I have wrote this out wrong pack. Sorry. <laughs> so I have wrote this out pack seven, and it has a long piece of fabric so the first piece of fabric let me put this right here is it's a big piece there's measurements on here so for the first one you're going to measure eight inches in oh sorry let me put this other side for on the one side you're going to measure eight eight inches in draw your line then you're going to if you're using waterproof canvas like me what i what i decided to do is i like to put a little crease so I know where it, it stands. On the other side, you're going to measure in seven inches. You're gonna draw your line, seven inches, seven inches and connect it. And then I use my ruler again and I just like to crease it. With this, when we fold our pockets, we're going to fold one, you're gonna fold your seven inches down and your eight inches down. We're going to take it, put it right sides facing us, and we're going to make the lining match up. Once you do that, you have two slip pockets. So what we're going to do is I'm, we're going to bring it over to the machine, and I'm going to stitch a one eighth seam allowance on this top of my, we're getting close to the end, so my thing wants to act a donkey. <laughs> okay. Just chill here, okay. We're going to do a one eighth of an inch seam allowance and top stitch. Take your time. Um, my, I'm still using the chocolate thread, so it's gonna be a little bit of a contrast, but I love contrast stitching. It's, I don't know why, it just, to me, I always make it feel like the bag just pops more. Again, personal preferences. There's no wrong or right answer to this. And then I'm going to snip. And then I'm going to do the other pocket because it's going to fit like this. And I'm just going to top stitch. And what you could do is you could just, if you wanted to, you could pop a few clips to make sure that this stays aligned and it doesn't shift the bottom two pieces. Or if you creased it well enough, you could just follow that crease. Okay. Trimming threads, trimming threads. And what we're going to do is 
grab our slip pocket backing, which I decided to use the same as the um, exterior. And we are going to put this on here and we're going to make sure this it our slip pocket is even Steven so what I'm going to do is take the two clips I had over there I'm just going to put them on the bottom of this and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a ruler and make sure everything lines up It lines up perfectly. So I'm going to pop some clips here and here. We are going to then base this at one eighth of an inch around. Don't skip on the basting. I've had so many horror stories where I was trying to skip it and I can do it and then something puck or something shifts and something moves. Basting is tried and true. It's you ba you have basted using quilting, garment making, um, and even when you're like doing millinery and hats, there is basting stitches. They're there for a purpose. They're they're there to help you to get a a clean professional finish to your project and especially when you have pockets you just don't want like the under pocket to shift or what have you okay I totally forgot a label but if you had a cute label you could stick it on either side I put one in the other one but I totally blanked so we're gonna grab our um, our side panels and we're going to put them right sides together and put some clips and then I'm just going to grab the other side and do the same thing the mirror pockets that we made again I'm using waterproof canvas if you you can use cotton you can use whatever I just wanted the bag because I'm a met I'm like I get messy I spill things I'm that person that will leave their lipstick in a hot thing. I just like things to be wiped out and clean. So it helps me. So we're going to do um, right sides together and we're going to, um, on figure 220, we're going to put right sides together and we're going to do the three eighths of an inch. And then we're going to like, for me, I'm going to finger press and then top stitch at one eighth of an inch. Let me just make sure you back stitch. I'm going to finger press and just pull it nice and taut and not try to have clips everywhere and I'm going to top stitch this at one eighth of an inch if I can grab my, <laughs> if I can grab my threads this same process of right sides together three eighths of an inch back stitching and beginning to end
sorry, I hate, I'm, I'm sorry, I moved the camera. It's right by um, the lever that I backstitched yet. And I apologize if it gets all shaky. Okay, so I'm gonna pull it taut. Just finger pressing it. Um, on canvas, you can iron on the right side very lightly without melting it if you, you feel like you need it. Um, I just feel like with this, you can either seam roll it or you can just pull it so that the seam is nice and close and then top stitch. I'm following if the inner foot, this foot is one eighth of an inch. So I'm gliding the back of this foot up against the seam and just measuring it that way. Um, sometimes if you are like your stitches are going wobbly, this is a big piece. So don't flip this piece over so that it doesn't knock anything over on your table and have a chance to shift your stitching. my stitching and then we are done with one side it's so pretty okay we're gonna get another pocket we're gonna get pack number eight i'm actually thinking of asking my husband to get a label on in my first drawer because i want to show you how cute it looks and i got some really cute labels from lauren morino oh. in one of her boxes and like they'll say like oh you look pretty or something it just makes you smile when you open up your bag <laughs> You're like, oh, this is kind of awesome. So on this piece, we have a similar piece. We have our main backing. Um, are there any labels there? These? Yeah. What would you pick one? You looking quite dapper today or may contain spooky stuff. <laughs> oh, let's go for dapper. <laughs> <laughs> spooky. Um, kind of not on the main Sorry, my puppy is doing puppy things. He hears a noise and he wants to like go full ham. So I have my zipper pull I'm gonna put on the side. We have, you're looking quite dapper today. I will like that when I look inside my bag. So I wanna look dapper. <laughs> so we have our side panels. We have a zipper pocket number two that, and zipper pocket number one. And we have the zipper pocket lining and this is the backing. So what we're going to do is one and grab some clips and then take this over here. So you're going to take your zipper pocket lining, the bigger piece on your work area. You're going to lay it lengthwise and then you're going to separate the teeth of your zipper. I'm going to, as I always do, I like to just fray these so that I'm not fray these burn these so it won't be fray. I'm giving you opposite stuff. Um, we're going to clip raw edges together. On this. We're going to put, I'm sorry, we're going to put the light. We're going to separate the zipper teeth clip one side of the raw edge zipper teeth on one short end. So it's like on figure two, two, three. And then we're gonna do it on the other end. I always like how she puts these together. It comes out really brilliant. You learn like, I feel like with our patterns, you learn different skill sets that you could put into any of the Orosa bags. And as the patterns grow, because Alexis is growing, we grow because we get different ways to put things in. And it's pretty amazing when you think about it. So we're going to uh, base these at one eighth of an inch. I'm just going to put pattern on the side. And I'm just 
going to bring my zipper tails around this side and start sewing one eighth of an inch on this. Okay, pull this out, trim the lining. And we have this part that we finished. We're going to then on work on the first pocket that's right here. We are going to use zipper pocket one. So we're going to pay, we're going to put right sides together on zipper pocket one on the piece that is to your left. Zipper pocket one and zipper pocket two have different lengths. And this is very important when you're thinking about directional because the top of the fabric for a directional needs to go towards the zipper, not going towards the inside of the lining. So we're going to take this. I get apparently, I thought, you know, I always like to trim them and then they just come out of nowhere. Like, nope, you didn't trim us. Um, so we're going to, we're going to sew these together at three eighths of an inch. to trim then we're going to take zipper um, panel two the longer cut and place that right sides together on the right side pop a few clips in it to make sure that it doesn't shift and move Grab your zipper towels and we're gonna go three eighths of an inch. Okay, so in the beginning of the stitch, you, you can see that somehow I went to one fourth to three eighths. So I'm going to go back over this part from here to here and do three eighths of an inch. Um, you won't see the stitching because it's in the lining, but it does make a difference with the finished product. See, it was like one eighth of an inch off. So it's fine. You can just go over it. This is an easy fix. All right. So With all this out facing each other, we're going to fold open the zipper pocket and we're going to position the seams toward the outwards, going this way, not going in. And we're going to top stitch at one eighth of an inch. And like I said, just give it Give it like a nice top tug and you'll be fine. So the seams are going outwards, not inwards. Same thing with this. We're going to pull it nice and tight and we're going to 
re-thread our, <laughs> our thread because you decided to, hey, I'm going to pull you out. So then next we're going to fold the pockets so they can meet. So we're going to fold it so they can meet. The longer part of the pocket is going to be, sorry, I'm just, some of the edges were acting kind of crazy. We're going to have them meet. So you, you kind of want the back pocket to fix on the top because it's going to go like this. So we're going to grab our zipper pull and I'm I'm telling you me and threads man I'm just <laughs> we're going to I'm using a I'm not using a maple leaf on this one I'm actually using this really cute uh, I bought it from um, uh, zipper valley and it says limited edition and i just was like yeah i want that on the inside of my bag when i i thought it was cute we're going to install the zipper watch this zipper just tape to just go on i don't know what was up with the maple leaves <laughs> oh. yeah i spoke too soon <laughs> So it's me, not the zippers. <laughs> Maybe I'm like zipper shy. The zippers are in a battle oh. with no. Oh one. my god! <laughs> I'm gonna for it's fraying a little bit. So before I drop my zipper on the floor, let me get these fray edges. And maybe this will help tremendously. Because if the zipper, like half the zipper tape is on it or if it's frayed, it can just. It, it can totally affect your. I have like a total bird nest on my pants. <laughs> All the threads. Okay. That have, does that happen to anybody else? When you stand up, you're like full of threads. Because that happens to me like every single time. All right. Let's see with the fresh new crisps area and there's no fuzz and the zipper teeth are freshly cut. Should slide right on. And it does. Of course. <laughs> okay, so I know you're going to be like, Shinovo, you just put this on. So what? So I don't have this open. I put it through. And then I go back to this side. And put this on. So that way, when I'm sewing, both I'm not trying to close the zipper on the other end. All right. 
So we have finished, we fixed that. What we're gonna do is now position this pocket. We're going, I'm going to take a couple of wonder clips or just clips <laughs> and I'm just trying to roll this out as best as I can. And then um, you have this nice crease up here. And we're going to top stitch this part at one eighth of an inch. I'm just going to clip this. to grab our backing and I'm going to just take the zipper take the clips that I had and just position them underneath and on the side and then what I'm going to do is get my ruler and make sure everything measures out we need to make sure it's three and a half inches down I'm just making sure I'm lining up the cork back backing with the ruler and making sure that all fits because you just want it to everything to line up. Okay. We're going to base this at one eighth of an inch. why I'm basing this I'm going to take this this tag and put it right here so that when it will be on the side when um anytime I look at it it's just going to be part of the, I'm going to base it on there with this any little pieces that don't match up with the core because I want everything to line up. Sometimes that happens with shifting. Just a number of different things. Trimming away the threads. Okay, then we're going to take our, our two mirrored panel side panels and we are going to clip them. We're almost done. You'll be surprised. Yes, we're doing the most interesting parts next when we're putting them together and then we're gonna start binding and stuff like that, but you, you're, you're, you did it. You did an awesome job. You're literally almost done with the bag. I like the lining because it has all these little pockets, but it's not overly complex and it has a simple sleek look to it. And she made these pockets where there's like 
not bulk. It's pretty genius. Three eighths of an inch. Back stitch. Trim threads. Then we're going to pull this line nice and top, and we're going to one eighth of an inch top stitch. And as I'm as I'm sewing this, I guess it's like like you're spreading out dough, kind of, and you're just. Trying to keep the fabric taut so it doesn't get wrinkly and it just comes out more crisp and just adjust as needed just make sure your needle is down see doesn't that look all you look all dapper that's super cute <laughs> okay all right we're gonna do the same thing on this side we're going to sew the three eighths of an inch and then top stitch at one eighth, and then we get to start putting the bag together. done with um the lining you also could have put like a label up here if you have a sewing that would look cute too or like a medallion or something really cool but we got this all right so once we put these together we are going to start assembling the bag but first what we need to do is we need to help release any bulk that might be in there so we're going to cut this down to like one eighth of an inch so that way when you're sewing it together it can reduce the bulk just on the top so with the 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 card pocket that we just did we're going to reduce this bulk and then we're going to grab the front panel and sew those bases together I have like a million pieces over here okay the front panel is the one with no cell phone holder it's it just has a nice big pocket with your name plate or your tag or handmade label what we're going to do is line them up are you excited because i'm super excited this this part always gets me happy <coughs> we're going to Line these up, clip, and we're just clipping around. just matching up everything because we're going to base these around at one eighth of an inch um for the top i like to just stick 
my my handles real quick inside <laughs> and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to piece these together at one eighth of an inch you can base at a wider stitch length if you want um, I'm at, I'm thinking about I'm going to base at a five stick to one eighth of an inch because we're going to be doing binding and sewing this panel together so you don't want any a whole bunch of especially if you're using vinyl you don't want a whole bunch of stitches in one area you can get procreation and it makes the area weak This is the part where I go around and I'm going to make sure I trimmed all my threads and any like extra hangy bits like there's a little bit of, of the, the back pocket right here I'm going to cut because I want to make sure everything is as flush as possible when I sew this on. So just any extra little I'm like oh yeah that doesn't fit that's not going against the cork like it's a line just a little trim it's probably your it's probably like no more then um one eighth of an inch if you have a little bit just keep it lined up and keep it clean so that way when you when you're binding it and you're adhering it to the bag everything lines up okay so that's one and we have this really cool that's how your inside is going to be you can put your passports in here and you're ready to go so we're going to put do the other side as well so I'm going to take this put my straps in here and I'm going to grab I feel like you literally went behind me <laughs> um grab the other piece I'm going to apparently trim threads I did not trim I'm going to line this up as best as I can. really like how this bag comes together this is like so exciting because literally all your hard work is you're getting to see your bag really form okay and I'm just clipping along going to do the same thing we're going to do a basting stitch around it one eighth of an inch and then we'll make sure we trim off any loose threads really well because we don't want them poking out of your bag
I can't believe I'm going to be using staples. We all know that I am like petrified, but I used it on a, on a bag earlier and I was like earlier this week and I was, I was actually super amazed like how well the turns and everything came out. trimming any loose fabrics that are hanging okay so we have both of these pockets done and now we are going to put the bag together so I love putting the front pocket on first. It just, I don't know, it makes more sense to me so I can poke it out and see if it looks right. So let's talk about your, your bag. La yesterday you were tasked with, at the end of um, season, season, <laughs> part three to one eighth of an inch steam, uh, stitch around the whole entire bag so no seams are open. So what you need to do now on folding is you need to make these two seams up here, the, the side seams match. And then from there, you can make a snip, I, or you can draw on it with a chalk pen. It's, it's perfectly fine. You draw, do a snip, and I, I just do like a small triangle snip because it's a three eighth of an inch, so it'll be like one eighth of an inch. Then match the seams on the so bottom side, bring your bottom over once you match the seams. And you're going to do the same thing. You're going to, you can snip or you can get a piece of chalk, like chalk and do it. You could just chalk it out and go like, hey, I'm making my, my white line here and here. It just, it's whatever, it's whatever is easier for you. I'm just showing you a couple of different methods. All right. So once you do that, I'm going to move this. We are about to get our clip game on and staple game on. First, I want to get rid of any loose threads because you don't want them to cut out, uh, be in part of your your bag for first and foremost foremost and second it just makes the bag look neater all right so we're gonna get the front pocket and i need to find the centers i do still have a white mark there um you can measure in you could definitely measure in or <laughs> what i like to do is match the seams so I know it's even and I just go down and I kind of clip it cause it's not, it's not as thick as you think it is. And I'm just matching all this, the pocket seams and I will take a pen cause it'll be too, um, it's too thick to clip for me. And I am going to find the centers. I have my chalk markings. moving everything to one side I'm going to take this and I'm going to turn in the bag where it is right sides in we need right sides to touch the right sides apparently still trimming thread oh my gosh it's like never ending this I promise I I feel like I do a good job but then <laughs> so I'm going to take my center I'm going to move this over because I need all my table. I'm going to take my center and 
match it up with my Sydney center here and I'm going to pop one two clips and three so that way I know I can keep keep it centered then I'm going to take my bottom and find my center over here okay so again Aura Rosa to me is like the gusset queen I don't know how she does it but the gusset always just seems to fit perfectly without any clipping or manipulating the fabrics which is amazing so we're just going around I like to finish the top all together And then I'm going to grab my staple. I got a really powerful one and I'm like super excited about it. Putting this together. So I'm grabbing more clips from the honey pot and we're just putting this bag slowly together. It's a big bag, so just take your time. You might break clips. I'm just be prepared. <laughs> and you're gonna have to like move it and manipulate it so that it works for you. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just matching raw edges to raw edges. And there's gonna there's some parts that are thicker than others, and you just have to spread out the bulk and it will fit. Okay, so we have like it clipped. I can go around and do it. I I didn't staple my first one. It because the, the gusset fits really well. So I got this like cool squeeze and load one, and <laughs> I'm going to staple at at one one eighth to one four. Because the seam allowance is three eighths, but you want to have your staples not as um you don't want it where you're gonna accidentally sew or it's gonna drag around on your sewing machine. It actually what it help what it helps to do is stop shifting. It stops the bag from shifting. And that's important to have a nice professional clean look. And you guys know if you watched any of my videos, I'm always opposed. To staple. I'm afraid of them. I've I've had a lot of weird staple gun and staple injuries. <laughs> I'm accident prone, so like that, it's inevitable. And there goes another clip. And there's a cool thing because the staple gun has like, this one has measurement. So it tells you how far you're in, like three eighths of an inch, one, one fourth. I just found that out. I was like looking at it. I was like, what are the measurements? Oh, that's so cool.
I'll do one. I'll do the next one, just clipping. And you, it, you can get the same effect of staples if you're like, yeah, I don't, I don't want to staple. It just helps. Um, you sew consistently without a removing clips, and you know, again, nothing shifting. It does take a little bit of time, but it's really worth the effort. But I will show you all clip, how to do an all clipped one on the other side. And when I get to the curves, I just want to make sure everything lines up. And you could do it like, if there's no rhyme or reason, you can do it like every half inch, every inch. As long as everything stays put, you're fine. Okay, so we have the bag. It's all staple. And we are going to sew our circle, the circle of guns is it right sides matching and we're going to baste our gusset at one fourth of an inch all right let's get her done we're gonna move the gun the staple gun and the clips and we are going to go one fourth of an inch and please avoid any staples that's why you have to staple like an eighth, one eighth of an inch so that you're not you're not um, sewing over staples, which would be unfortunate. And that's what happens. It does not like it. Yep, that happened. And I will fix this right now with the machine. I'm not trying to eat my thing. This, that's what I'm afraid of staples for. This, I don't know, I'm just bad at it, but we will persevere and we'll go on. Let me cut this thread. All right. All right. We will continue on. Hopefully I will avoid all staples again. But I am human, so mistakes do happen. All right, avoid staples. <laughs> See, no matter if you have an industrial knot, staples are complicated. And my thread was not threaded in that. That's awesome. Hold on. I was uh, sewing without it actually being threaded. Okay. 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 Let's do this again and I'll do the other one clips for sure. Just put your finger in there and make sure you're going around these curves without you're gonna have to manipulate your bag whether you have staples or clips. Some areas have more bulky seams than others. You're gonna have to get squishy with it. Your bag is gonna move. It 
It's a big bag, so just... Remove this staple, it's right in the... I'm gonna reset it now. <laughs> path to I'm using just a, some pliers and then when this wants to come out I just put it in a metal bowl so I can collect all the staples because I don't want to step on a staple <laughs> And that's the thing with staples. Yes, you get a very secure knot shifting, um, but it does take a lot of finesse and work. So we're at the, we finish basing and um, what I like to do, this is just me. What I like to do is I like to quickly turn the bag inside out because this is going to be the front panel with your handmade logo, whatever you have. And I just want to see that all the seams, all the seams got caught and they're Cause like my worst fear, I, it happens to me sometimes is like, I'll do binding and I didn't catch all the exterior things. So I'm just going to push this out. I know it's a lot of work cause we are definitely doing a workout with this. Let me move this over here. So what I do is I poke out all the curves. See, and look, this part right here didn't catch. So I know I need to just sew that part. Every other part catch, but this little part would have shown out if I didn't flip it over and see it. So I'm gonna fix that. So I'm going to flip this back over. And then I'm going to fix this part right here and then remove the staples. Mistakes happen. And if you can catch them early, then it will be less frustrating for you. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm going over on this side where there was the mistake. Just triple checking that side. 
because I need to see exactly where it's poking out. Okay. I see. And I'm going to, there's no staples over there. I'm going to sew over that particular part. I'm just gonna like what I I'll just gonna poke out that side just to make sure I got it like better safe and I got it all right cool. so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little metal bowl I'm gonna get my needle nose pliers I am going to you can put them in the metal bowl so that they don't catch you or um, I do this really cool trick where um, I put a flat, like a folder on the floor and then when I'm pulling them out, I just throw them on the folder and then what happens is that I can um, just pick the folder up and then kind of funnel it into the trash can. But the grabbing the metal is giving me Grey's Anatomy, I'm a Dr. Phil. <laughs> Like, yeah, I'm pulling the staples out, putting it in a metal bowl. You don't want to keep the staples in. A um, couple reasons. One, the staples could poke through the fabric and poke you. <laughs> Two, if the bag gets wet or in a moist, humid um, climate, you don't know how the staples are going to react. If they'll rust, what have you. So the, you can do staples. Staples to me is kind of like you're guaranteeing that your bag um, won't shift so you'll be okay. And just pull them as I go. And then we're going to bind the side and then we're going to put the other side together and then we're almost done. This is exciting. It's like being at the doctor and you've had stitches. Yeah, it's and getting staples taken out of your way. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> There's so many staples. I'm just triple checking that there's no more before I, I start binding and I, I don't want to hit another one. You already seen that my machine was like, no boy, no. Okay. I think I got everything. All right. Let's start binding this bad boy. And no more staples. We'll do clips for the other one. All right. So um, what I like to do is on, I use waterproof canvas sometimes I use two and one fourth or two and a half depending on what how I'm going to bind it I like to bind from the top because you look into the bag so you, I like to have the beginning and ending at the top because no one is going to look at the top of the bag they always look into the bag I'm doing right sides together and I am going to do a little fold 
I try to center it as best as I can. And then I'm going to go around. You're going to get your you're going to get your gusset and you're going to open it up and then you're going to you're going to base the bias tape one fourth of an inch seam allowance and then we're going to put it together at three eighths of an inch when we finish going around i like waterproof canvas i see some people using like a one inch and they just have raw edges exposed that is another way you can do it and it looks fantastic and it's it's faster but I apparently like to make things difficult. <laughs> You'll see the finish, and then you can decide on which one you want. And I just kind of go around. I want to make sure I caught any previous stitching so it's not showing through. Raw edge to raw edge. with it it's fine it will recover the bottom layer is thicker because you have different pockets and more material on the bottom. So just prep, prepare yourself, go slow, stop with the needle down if you need it. You can do a cotton, uh, all cotton one and it will help reduce bulk as well. Um, there's like a pre-made thing where you can, you can get pre-made by a spiny too. That definitely will make your life a whole lot easier because it's ironed, it's already creased out. And I'm just moving and shifting the bag along with myself. to do is fold this next to the other side so I have excess and then I'm going to take this and I'm just going to pull it taut and go do now is I'm going to pull this over and, and before I do that see how I have a row right here of stitching showing I'm going to go back over that real quick because I don't want any stitches showing That's why you pull it because you don't we all 
we're human. We make mistakes. So knowing how to fix your mistakes makes all the difference in the world. So we're going to fold this over. Um, I usually like to do a two inch, I think I did two and one fourth. So it's a little bit bigger because I was expect, you know, I expect more bulk. So what I do is I kind of take this, fold it onto itself and flip it over. And this is when I use my clips. I'm folding. And you're just making sure you're going over the previous stitch and it's not showing. I want the folding to look nice too. I like having really nice details on the inside of the bag. It just it gives it that professional feeling look. And I'm just folding. So on this, we're going to go three eighths of an inch. We're almost done with this, and then we'll sew it on, and then we go from there. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm usually sewing. I have like an audible or some kind of podcast on and it just, I just get into that motion and I start folding. It's so weird to hear like radio silence. <laughs> like I can hear my own heartbeat. Am I not entertaining? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. You're just uh, drinking your beverage, probably watching some kind of sports. I don't nope. know. Watching uh, Superman and Lois. <sighs> okay, it was close. I was in the vicinity. <laughs> so we're, we're going to um, now top this our over our excess over. We're going to go three eighths of an inch. And let's see, a little shorter stitch length. All right, so there's no elegant way to do this. <laughs> I like to just take my machine and do it at the three eighths of an inch mark. And I just work with the bulk um, and go from there. Use it all on certain areas. I 
actually should have used this uh, two inches of two and one fourth or two and a half, whatever I cut. It's probably two and a half. My, my, one of my favorite rulers is the two and a half inch one. Um, some people use fold over elastic. It, it stretches with it and it gives a nice crisp look to the binding. Uh, there's a lot of options out there. Are done with one side and oops. okay see and look how like crisp and clean nice edges it's a nice bag and we are going to start on the second part and then we're done like we're literally done I'm not going to staple this I'm going to clip it I found my centers. I, I believe I've marked them with chalk, but I don't see. Hold on. <laughs> I have my centers too. This is why clipping helps. Okay, center, matching seams. going to match. You're just going to match raw edge to raw edge. Was my neck yeah <laughs> okay Thank you. 
few more clips. And there we go. I'm just I'm smoothing out any areas that look like it has a wave. Probably like three, four. I can probably find them in the honey pot. <laughs> I got them. All right, we're almost done clipping this, and I'm gonna show you. You can do it with the clips. It's just for me. I need a lot of clips because I don't want anything wavy. And the more clips I have, the more stable I feel the bag is. I. All right. So we have this clipped. We're going to place it down on our machine. We're going to sew at a one fourth of a seam allowance to base this on. Again, it's going to get weird and just you're going to have to squish your bag and it's going to be fine. I promise. That puppy is like hilarious. Like he talks so much and it like i'm trying to hold laughter and like he is a talkative little dude he will tell you what is going on if he's upset he's gonna be one on the 29th he's um he's a big boy i know pop pop Um, my stiletto tool to help really shift that fabric that's trying to like bunch in. I'm like literally moving with the chair. I'm it's a it's a lot, but I'm telling you when we flip this bad boy out, you're gonna be like, what? <laughs> I made this. I'm gonna be like, yeah, you did. <laughs> you're pretty awesome. <laughs> have to put a few four rivets in and that's it we made the handles we made everything
bobbin thread. I ran out of bobbin thread a while back, I see. Hold on. So he's like 130 or 140 pounds, and he does like this weird bird whistly thing, and he has a massive big bark, right? So when he's doing his little whining thing, it just looks so weird because he's so big. He's super friendly though. This, by the way, is my third bobbin. So wind up, wind three to four bobbins, depending on your machine. I am using Tech 70, so it is a little bit thicker, but. All right. So I'm going to go back where, before the, the seam stopped getting sewn and I'm just going to pull the fabric over to it and I'm going to make sure I back stitch. Okay, so hold on. I don't know what's going on with my bobbin. If this happens, it is okay. We will fix it. I know, Pop Pop. Okay, I put my bobbin in. <laughs> Why are you acting like a little donkey? There we go. Okay. All right, we're we're at the home stretch. <clears throat> Make sure you're drinking water, staying hydrated, because you've been working out some serious muscle. So now we're going to grab our binding. I'm going to trim threads. Okay, grab our binding. I'm going to fold a small mount over and so so the previous stitches are not showing Okay, we 
again, I apologize if I sound really nasally. This sinus infection is like, oh, kicking my butt. Try making one of these on my um, free arm, so I might do that. Uh, not this month, probably in July. That would I want to see how how well it handles the curves and the whole nine yards. I'm trying to um, get a table so I can go back and forth on the free arm, but I'm pretty excited about it. I said I really want to make one and all leather for my husband so if we go somewhere he has like a really nice travel bag and my father-in-law he likes he likes really really nice um, high class things it would be super nice if I was able to make one that is like all black and have his um his fraternity like colors and fabrics in the inside he travels so I think he would get a really good use out of it. And I, I think he would appreciate the gift. He does a lot. He's, he has supported my business from day one. He's really proud of me having my own sewing business. And I definitely want to make him something nice. I've only made him a dop kit. I would like to like make him something like this. So when he goes out of town, he can put all his stuff in. And it's very personal. I, I, I've been looking at leathers. Um, I want something very like high-end and lush i was going for black but I, again i keep seeing these pulled oil tan ones and i'm like oh my god it's just it's so gorgeous it's so gorgeous and that's what when you make this bag you're gonna see you're like okay it's big but i promise you then your mind's gonna start spinning like who do you want to make one for I think it'll be a good college graduation because I mean our high school graduation or college graduation because face the facts we use luggage and in co like college I'm always using my Jansport backpack so if I had something like this where I was going to go visit my parents or visit someone over the weekend this would be a perfect bag and if somebody customized it just for me like I don't know it would make me feel really good or you can modify more pockets and have more mesh pockets on both sides. So it could be a baby bag. It could be a gym bag. Like it, it, it could be a lot of things depending on what materials you use and how you want to gift it or make it for yourself. Okay. He's eating his ball. <laughs> He's like, so, it's just, I'm, it's rock. My other dog, Roxy, she's quiet. Like she can come down here. You wouldn't know until she starts scratching or her collar is moving. She's really stealthy. Like she's sleek and you don't, she's silent. This one sounds like I have a full grown man walking around upstairs and bird calling with his baby whistles <laughs> when he plays with toys you can hear it he's super cute i'll sh i'll have a video i'll make a video and you guys can see both of them you'll understand why i do 
why I'm usually smiling or giggling because I hear them directly upstairs. I need to get my, um, I want to get new hardware floors and I would definitely want to get installation so I can't hear up there and they can't hear down here. But I do appreciate um, hearing him. He, it makes me smile. That's what pets do, right? They, they make you smile. So that's, I'm real talk right now. We have a massive bag in front of us. You are going to have to manipulate this. You see that I'm not on a free arm. You see that if you're on a domestic, the best way I tell you to put this up is your bulk needs to go up and you're going to kind of smooth and tuck this underneath and just hold it. This is the last stretch. You got this. Take one stitch at a time. Put your needle down if you're going on a curve. Smaller stitches around the curve makes nice crisp ending. So you can stop, put your stitches down, and then go back to your regular one. So like I said, there's no pretty way. So let's give it a go. We're gonna go three-eighths of an inch. this light <laughs> this is a big bag this is like this hands down is like one of the biggest bags I've ever made I'm not gonna lie your girl was really intimidated when I put the other side panel I was like holy cow how are we gonna do this <laughs> now you probably could have put it down and went around like blind stitch, but yeah, I suck at blind hem stitch, so I'm not chancing that. <laughs> on this it kind of went off the track a little bit and I need to get it back so I'm going to pop a couple clips in and then I'm just gonna stick my hand in here <laughs> and do it again Okay, 
So what I need to do before I try to turn this is I need to go over, there's like one part here that the threads, nothing was catching. So I'm going to um, remove a, these few stitches and re -sew that area. So that way it can be nice and clean and look good. It's only about 10 stitches, so it's not too bad. It happens. I should have put more clips on that area for our focus, and sometimes it just, it happens. And we can repair it. Okay. more stitches okay I'm going to cut those axis one the Okay, so I'm gonna stick this on and grab some clips and not have them fly everywhere possibly. And then I'm going to squish my bag, go back to that area. I'm going to do a few stitches. Okay. okay just we fix the problem. Okay, so we're going to trim threads again. And I'm going to burn, not burn, melt, milk, milk the little stumps. All right. Are you ready for a workout? <laughs> All right, let's do this. It's not that bad. It's, it's, it's actually better than you think. All right. So we have the flap. I'm going to unlock the flap and then we're just going to, I like to take a corner and I kind of push it in and then push in the other one. Let's get our work out on. Sometimes I like to hit things with steam because it makes it more pliable, but we got this. It's not that bad. We'll have it popped out in a minute. Hopefully. <laughs> side decided to come out first so I'm just poking out the, the rounded curves getting it
out, making sure everything looks nice and even. And then I will show you the bag. All right. It's, it's just a little finessing and it's, you're going to get the shape. It's going to all come together. It had a massive turn. So it is wanting to, um, it wants to go into its shape. You just have to finesse it a little bit. All right, I think we got it. Okay. Look at that. This is so cool. You have a really nice slip pocket in the front. You have a cell phone slide pocket right here. You have another pocket, and then if you don't want to use it as a pocket, you could put it on a trolley by unzipping it. When you open it up, you have a tongue lock or whatever you have. Then you have a slip pocket, a zipper pocket, and two pockets that could be used for, um, for um, like passports. Then if you open up your, the shoe thing, you can put shoes or like, you know, diapers or whatever that, so that way it could be, um, it could be stored and all you have to do is push it out unzip it from both sides and then you have another pocket like this bag to me is amazing like <laughs> Alexis really did outdid herself this is a beautiful bag there's so many professional looking details on this and like I said I think it will be a great gift for someone you can make it in cork you can make it in leather you can make it in vinyl you can make it in um, like upholstery or ca canvas. You probably can even make it in quilting cotton if you interface it really well. It's a gorgeous bag. The shape reminds me of those old um, campers that they would attach to the cars, like the little silver ones and stuff. It has that kind of shape to me. And I, I love this bag. So what we're going to do now is or I'm going to unzip it I'm going to poke holes through the fabric because we have four holes that we poked for, um, for, um, the rivets and that's going to be our guide. And that is the last and final step. Let me get my punch, hole puncher. So you're just going to follow the hole that you punched already. I know this could be scary because you're like, Hey, I just finished all this. You're going to scrunch it up. poke holes on the other side and this is just giving an extra um extra support and just like a really cool finish
Okay. So then I'm going to get our medium sized rivets. I'm just going to follow the hole that I just punched and put a cap on it. And because like the back pockets are either made with like vinyl or cork or uh, faux leather, it just has a just extra security. And you get the classic Aura Rosa straps. I love the straps. I'm going to try to not knock everything down while doing this. I'm going to do rivet press. And then I'm going to glue this and do the other side. pop off. My friends is the Aura Rosa travel bag again you can use it as a travel bag you can use it oh you know what would be awesome if you put really cool mesh pockets if someone does makeup and they can put their brushes and all their makeup in their nether one I'm telling you I'm every time when I make this I'm like what else can I make it for um, a camera bag endless opportunities nice gifts something really nice to sell in your shop that people can have it has like a retro new age feel though like it's super classy it feels like a throwback but with a modern twist so this is the bag you just finished it you're awesome congratulations definitely would take some pictures and post them in the Aura Rosa show off group and you'll see other of the testers making their versions. Like I said, some people made it with snaps. Some people made it with a turn lock. It is very interesting to see what everyone makes it with. So I hope you enjoyed. If you have questions about anything, please leave a comment down below and I will get back to you. Um, if you could like, subscribe, hit that notification button and share if you think this is worthy. It really does help out my channel. I appreciate it. I appreciate everybody and I hope you have a great day and you just finished an awesome bag. So the next time I see you, till the next time I see you, I hope you have a happy sewing days. Bye.